trying to find the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7 9700X? The Ryzen 7 9700X is a fantastic mid-range Zen 5 CPU with excellent efficiency and great gaming and productivity performance. It's one of the more practical CPUs from the Zen 5 lineup, with 8 cores, 16 threads, and a 65 watt TDP. To get the most out of this chip, you'll need a good motherboard that can showcase its potential. For this video, I've done an extensive review of the best motherboards available for the 9700X and ranked them based on metrics such as VRM design, aesthetics, features, and value for money. Price information and all motherboards discussed in the video are available in the description. Let's jump right into it. Number 3. MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi Gaming Motherboard – Best Budget Motherboard for the Ryzen 7 9700X The MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi is a great option for a budget build with the Ryzen 7 9700X, offering a low retail price point compared to its competitors without compromising on any of the essentials that you'd need to build a solid PC. This motherboard offers adequate VRMs, along with excellent connectivity options, and comes with a new Wi-Fi 6E built in for cherry on top. Looking into the design and aesthetics, you're not going to find any RGB on the motherboard. For this price range, frankly, that shouldn't be your main concern either. On the VRM heatsink, you'll find the typical MSI branding with black and white dots and lines, and it follows the black and grayish theme throughout the board to further complement the overall look. For a budget motherboard, it certainly does a great job at maintaining a decent aesthetic and highlighting the different features of the board in relevant places. The board also uses a silver steel armor PCIe slot, which not only reinforces the slot, but also further continues the established theme of the board, followed by the chipset heatsink in the same aesthetic. All of this establishes a design harmony when looking at the board, which is certainly appreciable at a budget price point. Coming to the power delivery, it uses a 15-phase VRM setup, 12 plus 2 plus 1, which is cooled by two heatsinks. These heatsinks use aluminum, along with a fin design on the sides, and are relatively thick. You also get high-quality thermal pads and choke pads that ensure the performance remains stable while your cores are running at high speed. This allows them to manage the VRM thermals quite effectively, providing acceptable temperature levels of around 82 degrees Celsius in Cinebench benchmark tests. With a solid power delivery for your components, you're looking at potential overhead even for overclocking. It also provides two 8-pin power connectors for the CPU. Needless to say, the power delivery will not be your bottleneck when it comes to performance. Speaking of performance, the board features four DDR5 memory slots, with support for speeds up to 7200 MHz and a maximum capacity of 256 GB. Along with that, you're looking at two PCIe Gen 4x16 slots for your graphics card. There's no support for PCIe Gen 5, both in storage and by 16 slots, so that's something to consider if you really are looking to future-proof your build. For storage, you're getting two M2 Gen 4 slots with a dedicated heatsink and thermal pad for one of the slots that MSI is naming Shield Frozer. You also get an easy M2 clip that removes the need for a screw, making it even easier to install SSDs. This is a neat little addition to the features and not a common sight in this range. In terms of connectivity, you get seven USB ports on the rear I.O. The great thing is, all of these ports are USB 3.0, so you don't have to worry about using an inferior port mistakenly. On the back panel, there's also an HDMI and DisplayPort for integrated graphics, along with a 2.5GB Realtek Ethernet port and Wi-Fi connectors for built-in AMD Wi-Fi 6E support. All of this is great, however, the IO Shield doesn't come pre-installed. You'll have to install it manually before installing the motherboard. Compared to its competitors, like the ASRock B650 Steel Legend Wi-Fi or the Asus Tough Gaming B650e Wi-Fi, the MSI board provides a much better value for money without missing any important features. 
Plus, you get better connectivity options compared to the Asus equivalent, along with a slightly better VRM setup. All in all, the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi is a great option for a new-gen value setup that offers all of the connectivity options you'll ever need, along with a decent VRM setup that ensures the motherboard performs under high loads. Ratings. VRM design, 8 out of 10. Connectivity, 9 out of 10. Aesthetics, 8 out of 10. Features, 8 out of 10. Value for money, 8.5 out of 10. For an overall rating of 8.5 out of 10. Number 2. ASRock X870 Pro RS Wi-Fi. Best premium motherboard for the Ryzen 7 9700X. While the X870E chipset is the best that AMD has to offer right now, it's not exactly the most practical choice. Of course, when you're hunting for a premium motherboard, extensive features are sometimes more important than sheer practicality. Still, assuming you want to find a good pairing for mid-range Ryzen 9000 CPUs, such as the 9700X, it's important to keep functionality in mind. ASRock X870 Pro RS is a high-end yet practical pick for AM5 processors. It has all the features one could ask for without going overboard on gimmicks or price. While comparing this board to its predecessor, the X670 Pro RS, I was surprised to see how many upgrades ASRock was able to cram into this one. It features more PCIe 5.0 lanes for storage, a beefier VRM setup, and a cleaner design that makes it easier to work with. Speaking of which, ASRock went all out with the design of this motherboard. It features a sleek white appearance that's uniform with both the PCB and heatsinks. There's a massive rear panel cover with the Pro branding on it, and the M2 cover features a subtle strip of RGB underneath. The VRM heatsinks are gigantic, and they do a great job of dissipating heat efficiently. I also appreciate this new trend of toolless M2 SSD installation, and I'm glad to see that ASRock is keeping up with that status quo. The quick release mechanism on all the M2 slots eliminates the need for any screws, making the building experience easier. Such tiny improvements go a long way when you're spending hundreds of dollars on a board. Unfortunately, while there are three M2 slots on the board, only one of them features the quick release mechanism. This is of course the slot that features PCIe 5.0 speeds. The rest of the PCIe 4.0 speeds feature the usual screw. While most people will only be using one slot, this does seem like an unnecessary way to cut corners. Fortunately, ASRock did not cut any corners with performance. The board features four DDR5 DIMM slots with support for speeds up to 8000 megatransfers per second. I also appreciate the robust 17-phase power design for the VRM configuration. This makes the motherboard capable enough for any AM5 CPU, even with a bit of overclocking thrown into the mix. In terms of connectivity, it features Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. The port selection is also great, as you get two USB 4 Type-C ports, plenty of USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2 ports, a BIOS flashback button, and optical audio output. It's worth noting that you can get this motherboard for cheaper price if you go with the non-Wi-Fi version. One of the few motherboards that come close to the design and overall performance of the ASRock X870 Pro RS is the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi Ice. This board also features a white PCB and has an extra PCIe 3.0 M2 slot over the ASRock. Other than that difference, they're identical. However, what sets the ASRock apart from the Gigabyte is the price. Considering the specs and performance are nearly identical, the fact that the ASRock is cheaper goes a long way to a more balanced build. You can spend that extra money on a fast M2 drive or a better cooler, which will translate to better performance in the long run. All in all, the ASRock X870 Pro RS is a fantastic premium motherboard. 
It's a bit more pricey than last generation's X670 boards, but it has more PCIe 5.0 lanes and a robust VRM configuration. I would have liked to see the M2 quick release latch on all slots, but that's a minor complaint. Overall, it's a solid motherboard all round, and I recommend it for both mid-range and high-end builds. Ratings. Design. 9 out of 10. Features. 9 out of 10. Connectivity. 9 out of 10. Power delivery. 9 out of 10. Value. 8.5 out of 10. For an overall rating of 9 out of 10. Number 1. Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite AX. Our top choice. Some might consider X670 motherboards to be irrelevant when it comes to the newer Ryzen 9000 CPUs with the introduction of the X870 and X870e. However, with how great of a value most X670 boards represent, that's not the case. The Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite is proof that a smaller number doesn't always translate to a worse experience. Sure, you get fewer PCIe 5.0 lanes for the graphics card and storage, but for the majority of gamers and traditional users, this won't matter. You still get PCIe 5.0 support on one of the four M2 slots, and PCIe 4.0 for the by 16 graphics card slot. So, in real-world usage, you're not missing out on a lot in the first place. Compared to its predecessor, the X570 Aorus Elite AX, the X670 Elite features the new AM5 socket, a significantly better VRM configuration, an extra M2 slot, and much more. It's rare to see a manufacturer provide such significant upgrades in almost every way, but the new chipset certainly helps here. Design-wise, the X570 Aorus Elite looks noticeably different from previous Aorus Elite motherboards. It features a matte black PCB with light grey accents on the heatsinks and rear I.O. cover. A gigantic Aorus Eagle logo sits proudly on the VRM heatsink, and there's minimal branding on the chipset and M2 heatsinks. Unfortunately, if you're looking for any sort of integrated RGB, this board won't satisfy your needs. That's not inherently a bad thing, but considering that a lot of motherboards have that nowadays, it might disappoint some people. On the other hand, I do have to appreciate the easy latch design on the M2 and PCIe slots. These quick-release latches are easy to work with and make the building process much easier. You'll also find some debugging LEDs at the bottom that light up during the post-process. This helps a lot in troubleshooting any potential issues with your system. In terms of performance, this motherboard is no slouch. It supports DDR5 kits at up to 8000 megatransfers per second with overclocking, so you won't have trouble with high-performance RAM kits. The memory training times are great, and you won't have any problems with boot times. I also found the 20-phase VRM setup to be highly impressive. Admittedly, I think it's quite overkill for any mainstream motherboard, especially considering it's stronger than many X870 boards. However, I can't complain when we're getting such incredible stability for a cheap price. Needless to say, this board can handle any high-end processor with ease. However, the PCIe by 16 slot only supports PCIe 4.0, not PCIe 5.0. Admittedly, there's a negligible difference in performance when running your graphics card in PCIe 5.0 over PCIe 4.0. With that said, it's great to see that at least one of the M2 slots supports PCIe 5.0 speeds. For wireless connectivity, you get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. You also get a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port for fast and stable wired connection. As for the rest of the ports, you get a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, plenty of 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2 Type-A ports, HDMI out, and a dedicated USB for flashing BIOS. Of course, you also get a dedicated BIOS flashback button that's common with most mid-range boards these days. It's worth noting that if you spend a bit of money, you can get Gigabyte's own X870 Aorus Elite AX. 
However, I believe the X670 version is the better value. Sure, the X870 version has more PCIe 5.0 lanes for your drives and graphics card, but that won't matter much if you're a traditional gamer. The more noticeable addition is USB 4, which will matter more to people dealing with high-speed data transfers. If none of that matters to you, and it won't if all you care about is gaming, the X670 is a much better value proposition. You can spend the extra money on a graphics card, more storage, or even faster memory. All of these are more important than PCIe 5.0 lanes for the average gamer, and this is why I prefer this X670 motherboard over some X870 options. Simply put, the X670 Aorus Elite AX is the best overall motherboard for AM5 CPUs like the Ryzen 7 9700X. It has all the ports you could need, an overbuilt VRM setup, and performance that's ready for next-gen components. It's a fantastic buy, despite being an older chipset. I highly recommend it for any high-performance gaming build. Ratings. Design. 8 out of 10. Features. 8.5 out of 10. Connectivity. 9 out of 10. Power delivery. 9 out of 10. Value. 9.5 out of 10. For an overall rating of 9 out of 10. So, what do you think? Which of these is the best motherboard for you? If you're serious about maximizing your PC building experience, there's so much more to explore. Check out more of my videos packed with suggestions and reviews to help you stay ahead in your PC building.